Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. In this video, I'll show you a universal camera cage specifically for mirrorless cameras, and it's affordable. A universal camera cage is just like any other camera cage, except it has features that allow it to be used for different kinds of cameras, regardless of its shape. Maybe it's a little taller, and you can still fit this camera cage. Now, I have reviewed different camera cages over the years, and these are specific to some camera body. So this was specific to the Sony a7S and it's a beautiful cage and when they upgraded to the a7S II they decided to change and I say they I'm talking about Sony. Sony decided to change the size and shape of the camera so I had to purchase a second cage. This is from Varamon. Now all of these cages have their pros and cons and I've shared these reviews on my channel so if you want you can check it out. The biggest problem with this kind of cage is it's expensive. So for every camera that you buy, every model that you buy, if the manufacturer decides to change the shape and size or where the HDMI port is or how the battery is or where the SD card is or whatever it is, it's difficult for you to adapt with a custom cage made specifically for one camera model. And these cages are too expensive. The price that you spend on a cage can be used to buy another lens or buy extra media cards, batteries, or whatever. It's not a small amount of money. Now let me show you this universal cage. What makes it a cage is this. The ability to adjust the height and the fact that all these parts are like Lego bricks. So you can customize them, you can move them around, everything is screwed together using hex screws. So you can basically customize it regardless of what camera you're using. And I'll show you that in just a bit. The second type of universal camera cage is one that has one rod and you move the top portion of the top plate up and down based on that rod. I like this design better because it has two points of support as opposed to the single rod support. Now, I'm of the firm opinion that you don't have to spend a lot of money on camera cages because one of the big misconceptions people have is that the cage actually protects your camera. It doesn't. The cage does not really protect your camera from a fall. Whatever force the cage is going to encounter is going to be transferred to the camera as well. The best a cage can do is protect a camera from scratches or some kind of small abrasions or whatever. But is it really worth spending, you know, $100, $200, $300 on a, a few pieces of metal just to avoid a few scratches on your camera body. I don't think so, especially if you're using your camera for professional use, you're getting money from your camera, you don't really care how your camera looks. It's only those uh, amateurs maybe or beginners who buy the cameras and treat it like gold and you know they have to keep it in the shelf, uh, everything needs to look perfect. But for most professionals, especially, I, don't, I just throw my camera around, I don't even care how many scratches are on there. It's not important, it's not important to your work. So I don't really see the point in or support the notion that a cage actually protects your camera. That's not, for me, it's not the prime motivation to buy a cage. The prime motivation to buy a cage is all these extra mounting points that you get on the cage. One of the main reasons why you would want to get a cage is for the mounting options. You can mount external recorders, external monitors, viewfinders, battery plates, and any kind of accessory that you want on the camera itself can be mounted on the camera without the camera having to take the weight of those accessories. So the weight is distributed across the frame of the cage instead of the camera itself. The camera is not designed to take a heavy load. For example, this is a Nikon Z6, great camera, but the hot shoe is really designed just to take light accessories like audio, adapters made of plastic, uh, a flash, it's not really designed to take a heavy external recorder like an Atomos Shogun uh, with extra batteries and an SSD and all that. You don't really want to overload a hot shoe mount. That's one of the great advantages of a cage. The second biggest advantage of the cage is you can actually attach a top handle. Again, something you cannot do on a hot shoe mount, you just break the hot shoe mount depending on the weight under it. With a cage, now you can attach a handle on the top and it's rugged and again the weight is distributed across the frame so you can lift your entire rig. It might have heavy brick batteries, it might have a monitor, a viewfinder, might even have uh, rods and a follow focus system and a mat box. All that might add up to about seven or eight kilograms of weight uh, fully loaded and you need something sturdy to pick it all up and you have to depend on it. You don't want everything crashing down from under you. So I like the fact that this 
particular handle can be screwed on to the top plate instead of attached with some kind of quick release mechanism. I'm never a fan of that because everything depends on whether or not you're tightened the quick release mechanism properly. And sometimes if you make a human error, then you're going to pay a big price for it. I like the screwed version. The side handles, I'm not really a big fan of, but there are some situations where you, if you increase the width of your grip, you get a more stable support. So you might have seen those uh, steering wheel kind of frames that allow you to get a little more stability in your shot. So the closer your hands are, the less stable they get. And if you have a little width, you might be able to hold the camera a little steadier than you would otherwise. But otherwise, you really don't need the uh, side handle. It comes with the kit. The entire thing, this particular cage is cheap. It came for about $89. I'll link to it in the description. You should check it out. It's a no-name brand, basically, but you'll find it on Amazon under different brand names. It came in this beautiful professional-looking box, and it has about 4 million screws and 10 million hex keys. And the most important thing, it has these extra length rods. The cool thing about the rods is you get two, two lengths here. So you can see that this one is almost twice the size of this one. So if you have a full size DSLR, like a 1DX, and even if these specific uh, rods don't work. You can send this to a machine shop and actually get the size that you want and still use them because the mounting points, everything else is paid for. All you have to do is change this. But I believe with this, you should be able to accommodate all kinds of cameras with this one cage. So it comes with two options. I chose the smaller one because all my cameras are mirrorless cameras. And for mirrorless cameras, the smaller one is good enough. So what I'm going to do is quickly mount a Nikon Z6 on this cage. I have tested this cage on a GH5, I've tested this cage on a Sony a7S II, Sony a7S, they all work fine. It uses the same fundamental principle. You have a hot shoe adapter on top and you align that to the hot shoe on your camera. I don't know if you've noticed, but the hot shoe mount and the tripod hole uh, underneath the camera are usually aligned in the same vertical lines. If you match the bottom tripod plate to the top shoe plate, the camera will be level. And this is true of every camera. So this is how they make sure the camera stays rigid in the cage and it doesn't twist around. If you have just one point of attachment, the camera might twist around, you don't want that. So having a hot shoe uh, or cold shoe adapter on top fixes the camera in place and points it in one direction. So the first thing you do is attach the camera to the bottom plate. And as you can see, you might have to slide the plate left and right to make sure the camera fits neatly in the center. So let's go ahead and do that. The best order of doing it is first attach the base plate, then slide in the hot shoe adapter. Otherwise, it's gonna be a huge pain. Tighten the hot shoe. The top and bottom is now fixed. The side needs to be locked, which is why it's making all this noise. And that needs a second hex key. I'm pretty sure they have good reasons for having all kinds of hex keys on this rig. Ideally, I would have preferred just one, but there might be stability issues, which is why they have three options. Luckily, you don't have to do this all the time. You just have to do it every time you change your camera. I still find this preferable to buying an entirely new cage. It took me about half an hour the first time I did it, and it comes in pieces, so you have to assemble everything yourself. And the cage is rigid and solid, and based on how you want to hold it, you can attach your handle, depending on whether you want it this way, whether you want it behind, or the other way. I like to have it somewhere here, so it's slightly back heavy instead of front heavy. So let's go ahead and attach that. It's got these big uh, tall screws so you don't have to worry too much about the handle falling off. And there are two of them, pretty secure handles, as secure as you're gonna get. So once you're done, you have to do a final 
adjustment of everything. Make sure you haven't missed any screw. Everything is tight and perfect as it should be. And you won't have any surprises in the field. And there's so many of them. And there you go. So is it rugged? Yes. I'm trying to pull it apart, but it's perfectly stable. The camera isn't going anywhere and it's a great cage. You can attach the side handle if you want to over here, or you can even hold it this way. It doesn't restrict the access to the SD cards. Uh, this side is open. It's an open cage design. It doesn't restrict access to any of the ports here. So you can see I have attached this and it's just a screw system. Pretty elegant and simple solution to this problem. You attach the HDMI and you have a very secure HDMI mounting system. So you can attach this simple thing instead of having a very some kind of proprietary accessory and you can do the same for multiple points for USBs, uh, sorry USB here or any other kind of attachment. There's no blockage to the SD card, there's no blockage to the battery compartment. It gives me complete access to all the controls of the camera. So it's neat and it's tidy. It can take all kinds of accessories. There is a cold shoe adapter on top. So if you want to attach a microphone or you want to take off the handle, you can do that and attach a, an external recorder on top. You can attach something to the handle directly, maybe another microphone if you wanted to. You can attach an uh, electronic viewfinder accessory on the side. The cool thing is underneath everything is pretty flat. So you can attach a tripod plate. If you have a lens adapter, you can also attach it to a tripod plate and get everything perfect that way. It doesn't restrict you because the other cages that I bought, if you want to attach 15 millimeter rod systems, they had the, their own proprietary stuff. And it wasn't very useful when you try to use it with other cameras. So if you buy a cage, it's pretty much stuck to one camera. When you sell the camera, you also have to sell the cage. And if nobody buys the cage, it becomes waste. That's Basically, this cage is about $89, uh, maybe about $100 if you buy it on Amazon. I'll put all the links below in the description so you can check it out. The reason I bought this cage is because I got sick and tired of looking at custom cages for different cameras, spending money, ordering them, and then not knowing what to do with them at the end. So I think it's time for universal cages to be a permanent fixture thing. You really don't want custom cages for every single camera. It's just a total waste of money if you ask me, unless you have something very expensive like a RED or an Alexa. And then custom cages actually matter a lot because a lot of thought has been put into how the accessories are gonna be used. For DSLR and mirrorless users, pretty much most of it has been sorted out already. You know, microphones, recorders, monitors, viewfinders, and some extra accessories. There, there aren't a lot of surprises. I hope you like this recommendation of mine. If you like this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Bye now.